Uh, hi, my name is uh, Scott Fort Monroe. I'm a graduate student here at Berkeley, and today I'm going to talk to you about a software um, program I developed called Insight Maker, and it's a free uh, model building platform that lets you build and share uh, models with others. I, I do a lot of academic research. I read a lot of papers uh, that deal with models. I have an experience in the past where I see an interesting model, and I want to reproduce it, I want to recreate it, I want to experiment with it, adapt it, extend it. So I'd really like it if, and this is sort of a dream, but I think sometime it will happen. Um, whether it's Insight Maker or something else. Um, where when authors publish a paper, um, they give you a link to an interactive version of the model right there. And then you as a user, you can just go on to insightmaker.com and then run the model, interactive with it, extend it, without having to try to um, decode what they documented in their paper. Let me give you an example, and this is actually sort of a famous example. This is called, uh, what's called the World 3 model. And it was originally developed, I think, in the 70s, 70s or 80s, and they built a model of how the world would evolve over time in regard to population growth, economic development, pollution, etc. So right now I'm going to run this model and it's going to simulate uh, population growth from 1900 all the way up to 2100. So it's both stimulating the past, which we then can compare to what actually happened to see how accurate it was, but then also predicts into the future. You can see this model predicts right now uh, a peak population of um, about seven and a half billion people in the year 2030. And then after that, it has this very pessimistic model. It predicts that the population is going to crash. People are going to start dying off, and by 2100, we're going to lose almost half our population. So it's a very pessimistic story. So there's a variable in the model called the initial, initial non-renewable resources. Things like coal, oil, how much is available in the world. The fact of the matter is we have access to much more non-renewable non resources today than we did back then. So you can experiment with this and say, what happens if we started with more non-renewable resources than they assumed? And now we can see the result up here. So again, the green line is the key variable, it's the population growth. And we can see they actually didn't change. They changed a bit. Um, the population growth is now higher. It now reaches about 8.5 billion before the peak, at the peak. It goes to about 2050 maybe. But then the crash, and just a significant crash, the population dies off. So this is showing you that more technology in terms of not accessing resources, exploiting our environment, isn't going to solve this fundamental dynamic. You need different solutions, mainly um, cleaner technologies, things that won't affect, uh, that won't create new pollution. Okay. That's just an example of the model.